نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد Number one, Islamic history, the birth, family and upbringing of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born amongst the honorable Arab tribe of the Quraysh in Mecca. He was born on Monday during the month of Rabi'ul Awwal. His father's name was Abdullah who passed away before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born. It was his grandfather Abdul Muttalib who named him Muhammad. His mother Amina was the daughter of the chief of the Banu Zuhra tribe and she was held in honor and esteem by all of the women of the Quraysh. According to the custom of the Arabs, Rasulullah was sent to a wet nurse when he was born. He therefore stayed approximately four years with Hazrat Halima Sa'di anha, who belonged to the Banu Sa'ad tribe. He then returned to his mother in Mecca, but stayed only two years with her until she passed away. He was then taken into the care of his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib. However, he lost his beloved grandfather after two years when he was only eight years of age. It was then that his paternal uncle, Abu Talib, took him under his wing. Number 2. Allah's Par, The Creation of Man one of the wonders in the manner in which Allah has created man is that the body forms in a place where there is neither air nor light. In this threefold darkness, the eyes are created, the ears are created, the hands with their fingers and even their nails and individual prints are created. All of this together with the unique appearance of every person is created within this dark place. Allah says, he is the one who fashions, creates and shapes you in the wombs as he pleases. It stands to reason that something that is created cannot be worshipped. There is no Allah beside him, the mighty, the wise. Surah Ali Imran, verse 6. Number 3. A Farth. Fasting when ill or on journey. Allah says in the Quran, Those who are ill or on journey, then they should make up for the missed fasts by fasting the same number of days at another time. Surah Baqarah, verse 185 If a person is unable to fast due to illness during the month of Ramadan or due to a journey that he has to undertake, it will be wajib compulsory for him to make up for the missed fasts after Ramadan. Number 4. A Sunnah the surahs that are misnoon to recite in the Witr Salah. In the Witr Salah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to recite Surah A'la, the first raka'ah, Surah Kafirun in the second raka'ah, and Surah Ikhlas in the third raka'ah. Nasai Hadith 1738 from Hazrat Abdul Rahman bin Abza radiallahu anhu. Number 5. An Important Act and Its Virtue the promise of Jannah for raising an orphan. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, When a person assumes the responsibility of providing for an orphan, Allah shall certainly admit him into Jannah, unless he had committed a sin that cannot be forgiven. Tirmidhi hadith 1917 from Hazrat Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu anhu. Number 6. A sin. The punishment for backbiting. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam related that when he went on Mi'raj, he saw people with nails made of red copper, which they were using to scratch at their faces and chests, causing deep wounds in them. Who are these people? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked Hazrat Jibreel alayhi salam. 
Hazrat Jibreel alayhi salam informed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam that these were the people who ate the flesh of others in the world, meaning that they used to backbite and dishonor others. Abu Dawood, Hadith 4878 from Hazrat Anas radiallahu anhu. Number seven, this world, not making this world an objective of life. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said that when a person makes this world the objective of his life and only travels and thinks about it all the time, Allah will place poverty and hunger before his eyes. He fears it all the time and worries what will happen to him. He will thus spend all his time in this worry, even though he will receive only that much of this world as is decreed for him. Targhib wa Tarheeb, Hadith 2463 from Hazrat Anas radiallahu anhu. Number 8. The Akhirah, the frightful scene of the day of Qiyamah. Allah says in the Quran, O people, fear the punishment of your Rabb by obeying his commands. The earthquake of the day of Qiyamah is a tremendous thing indeed. When you will witness the day of Qiyamah, you will see that people will be so frightened and worried that every nursing mother will forget her suckling infant and every pregnant woman will abort her unborn child. You will also see people in a drunken stupor, although they will not be drunk. But they will be in this condition because they will realize that Allah's punishment is severe. They'll be worried that they should not have to face his punishment. People will be oblivious of everything else. Surah Hajj verses 1 to 2. Number 9. Cures from the Quran and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Treating the ill with talbina. Hazrat Aisha radiallahu anha used to advise people to prepare talbina to treat the ill, saying, I have heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say that talbina pacifies the heart of the ill and dispels grief and distress. Bukhari Hadith 5689. Talbina is made by mixing crushed barley with milk and then adding honey to sweeten it. Number 10. Quranic Advice Allah says in the Quran, O you who have Iman, obey Allah, obey the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam and those in command among you, your leaders and authorities in all fields, such as the Imams of Jurisprudence in Fiqh. If you dispute regarding any matter, then refer it to Allah, that is, find the solution in the Qur'an and the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or find the solution in the ahadith, if you believe in Allah and the last day. This is best for all and gives the best result, because you will then not be basing your decisions on your personal opinions. Surah Nisa, verse 59. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon, wa salamun ala al-mursaleen, والحمد لله رب العالمين